welcome and cilantro. Um, this is just a quick update on the um, 1997 Heritage here you see behind me. I have this bike now back on the road coming up on roughly 10 days. So today is Sunday and just over a week ago on the Thursday I got this bike back on the road. It had been in storage for 10 plus years and then I owned it for a year and a half before I pulled my finger out and um, actually got it back on the road. If you haven't seen uh, any of the previous videos on the history of it, uh, just go back and have a look and it'll let you know how I came to have it and why I have it. So we'll probably chat about uh, a few things now about the bike, what I've noticed after the few runs I've took it on and uh, why it's on the lift and what I'm checking for. So I'll be back with you in a second. So before I start with why it's on the lift and what I've noticed, the difference between this bike and that bike is, um, I'd like to take a minute to give a shout out to Dave. Cheers, Dave. Dave's a follower that asked me to do a video on the lift. So this is the bike on the lift. So as you can see from here, that trap door is pretty much more than useless for the um, taking that back wheel on and off is I think what the trap door is originally designed for. And then you come to the front of it. This is how I like to strap the bike on. So I've got a ratchet strap on each side. <clears throat> and then if I was leaving the bike on for a long period of time, which I don't like doing unless I really have to, I will then a ratchet strap through here around this and I'll tighten it there and then you need one of these little scissor lift jacks in there that gets the back wheel up off the ground and then same thing again you can put the bike on backwards and you can put it onto the front of it jack the front up so you can take the front wheel off take the forks out do all that sort of crack so cheers Dave for asking me to do a video on that um, so the reason I have the bike on the lift at the minute is um, the bike's now back on the road after so long and um, the bike's spent 10 plus years in storage and then I had it for a year and a half fucking before I pulled my, or pulled my finger out and got the bike back on the road but I've done a thousand k's now over the last two weekends and with the thousand case now I'm just giving the bike a check over because I've changed out the front back fender, I've changed out the tank, changed the seat, the exhaust, air breather, carburetor, brake disc, fucking brake pads, all that crack, da 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 da. But um, it's given me a chance now to go over everything I've touched and just check that nothing's working its way out or working itself loose. Um, it's uh, these Harleys like to vibrate a lot, so it's it's worth checking. I also do that on the red bike here. Um, every time I service the bike and stuff, I was, same thing again. I just try and go over as much as I can just to make sure there's nothing loose on the bike. So um, it, it gives you peace of mind if, if nothing else. But the good thing, the one thing I picked up on the bike when I when I had her up here and I checked everything, everything's pretty much good rather than the the back wheel here. So I don't know if you can see this. Uh, black line here so you can see these scope marks coming down the way so when I put the bike up onto the left here the um, the back wheel was rubbing off the belt here so they were just touching just in here it's, it's hard to see but they were just touching over here probably didn't see that at all but it was touching and the reason it was touching is the back axle wasn't properly lined so um, I had to realign the back axle and I took that off a bit I'd say the reason for that is the guys that put the back wheel on for me or changed out the tires they um, took it last minute I didn't give them much notice and they were actually under pressure and other than that I know them real well they took the time to throw it in for me and um, the other done it a bit too quick or number two it just worked itself loose and um, 
start of the tournament. Either way, it's not the end of the world. It's not a big drama. But this just goes to show, um, even if you're not a mechanically minded and stuff, you still should be checking your bike, throwing it up there. If you notice that, but you can't fix it, at least you can bring it to your mechanic. Um, if you notice it and you've never worked on your bike before, there's fucking heaps of videos on YouTube um, to show you how to do simple shit like that. I myself, I'm not mechanically minded. I've no mechanical background, and I only do this because I enjoy it. I enjoy being out in the shed for a few beers, messing around with my, with my bike. But um, that is uh, why it's on the lift. All good. Pretty happy with the bike so far. It, um, other than that, it hasn't really given me much dramas. So my plans for this bike in the next uh, few months is next month uh bombala is a bike show here in australia so i intend taking this bike um i'm gonna go down and up on the one day so it's gonna be a big day for the bike it's gonna rack up a lot of keys and that on that day going to the show we'll leave early morning we'll not be home till late evening but we'll um uh, i'll take this bike for that spin and it should be good fun so far the differences i've noticed between um this uh, is Heritage Evo or Evolution motor compared to the Fat Boy uh, Twin Cam motor. Is this bike here likes to um, vibrate a lot more? There's a lot more vibration in it. Um, performance wise, uh, the Fat Boy would bitch slap the fuck out of this bike here. It's just got way more power, way more torque. Where this bike doesn't have that. But this bike is um, still a pleasure to ride and I really do enjoy it. The question I was getting a lot uh, with my mates and stuff, they're going, well, which bike do I intend keeping? Or if I had to sell one, which one would I sell? And for a long time, it's like, the red bike, I'll never sell it. It's my first Harley. It will forever have a place in my heart. I don't intend selling it, but... Um, I didn't think this bike would be fit to compete and uh, now today after the thousand k's if the shit was to hit the fan today and i had to sell one of the bikes i would probably sell the red one over the black one but in a few weeks time when the novelty of this one is worn off it might switch back around again um i'm very lucky i'm in the situation i have both bikes i can afford to keep both bikes and i don't intend selling either of the bikes um I intend this one to have a home forever and this one's working its way for me to intend it to have a home here forever too so um, that is the differences i've noticed on the bike so far but as i say this bike's i've only got a thousand k's in the seat of this bike well not even just in around a thousand k's so it'll be good to see after the summer when i get a couple of thousand up on this bike and I can do a proper comparison then. There's other stuff that it's I noticed a bit of a difference is um, the forward controls, which I've always wanted on the bike. Um, great job until you're doing 200k straight on the bike and you realize you've got nowhere to move your feet back and forth compared to the boards. So your, your legs do get stuck in that one position. You have very little movement to uh, adjust them around to relieve any aches or pains you have but these are first world problems um as i say it wouldn't let me um discourage anybody from buying one of these or putting forward controls on i actually still do love them i actually prefer them better starting out on the ride maybe the long hauls are a bit different on it but other than that that's it um i think i'll wrap that video up here before i start waffling on so thanks for watching um and if you could could you like and subscribe to the channel or like the video subscribe to the channel it does help with algorithms the whole point of this channel or ch uh, channel is um i'm a dipshit in the shed fucking around if i can do it you can do it i just want people out there that are new to bikes or maybe long long time riders but um haven't done much work for the bikes so if they get a chance to watch these videos and see some dipshit like myself doing this, it might give them a bit of confidence to um, try it themselves. But nonetheless, cheers. Thanks for watching.
Bye.